I think it's a really big challenge. Looking forward, we also have the post-2015 discussions coming up. So there's a real uh, strong shift in terms of policy directions and funding investment. I think it's a critical time now in the HIV response. We have the uh, technology, we have the knowledge of how to end the epidemic, but we need to sustain the response for the coming years to ensure that's possible. I think one of the key lessons from the Australian response has been the close collaboration between the civil society and community with the government to respond to HIV. I think for Asia Pacific, the role of civil society is emerging and has grown stronger over the past years, but needs continued support so that the community can play a strong role going forward. I think that's a potential danger, but I think we need to ensure that the response is sustained. And there is a strong role for civil society and communities in that response, particularly in terms of linking communities who are very marginalised and sometimes criminalised to the services that they need, both in terms of HIV, but more broadly for addressing human rights and broader health issues. I think Australia has made huge progress for the HIV epidemic, particularly in the early days. There was uh, strong strides in terms of harm reduction work and engagement with the gay community in the response and government being very supportive around the HIV response. There's still um, strides to be made in terms of rolling out new technologies such as rapid-based testing, community-based testing and ensuring that their response is sustained over the long term. In the Pacific, there's many challenges, particularly around the geographic spread of the countries and in terms of a recognition of key affected populations, stigma and discrimination, and criminalization in some countries. There needs to be, uh, across the Pacific, integration of HIV into broader SRH services so that the services can be more sustainable. There needs to be work around human rights and stigma and discrimination so that key affected populations can play a stronger role. And there needs to be, uh, particularly in Papua New Guinea, um, more investment in the key affected populations so that they can access services. And some key issues, I think, for Asia Pacific in terms of getting to zero is looking at, to sustain the response, to ensure the involvement of key affected communities, both in terms of policy advocacy work so their voice can be heard, and in terms of service provision and rollout. We need to work to address stigma and discrimination and criminalization of key affected populations. And we need to ensure the rollout of new technologies and treatment accessibility for, for, for people who need it in the region.